Hi, in this video, we are going to see how we can perform speech to text using Google Cloud API. So if you see a lot of cloud providers today, like Google, Azure, and AWS have their own set of cognitive APIs. These APIs can be either for a computer vision problem, or it can be for a natural language processing problem, or there are other APIs as well for different purposes. One of the advantage of this API is it allows you to get started with your project as soon as possible, right? You don't have to wait for, wait to develop some of these capabilities like speech to text, which are hard to develop as well. You need, you need extreme amount of data to train your models. There are a lot of open source pre-trained models available that you can use, but one good advantage of Google Cloud and other cloud providers is they are always updating their uh, speech to text models. Uh, and they are one of like uh, best in class in the industry for the lowest word error rate. And it is pretty easy to work on and you implement in your project as well. And uh, actually you can get a better, faster time to insight in your project by incorporating such APIs that are complex to develop. In some cases, it is good to do it uh, on your own. It's, yeah, it's good to build a custom model, but in some cases like where you're not going to uh, really uh, kind of use it continuously 24 by seven, uh, the cost of using these APIs is very less than implementing and maintaining it uh, forever, right? So let's get started. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Google Cloud Speech uh, package. I'm just doing a pip install over here. I've already done that. I am already also mounted uh, my uh, Google Drive. So that is the second step. Now coming to the import, I am importing the typical IO and OS package. I'm importing Google Cloud, uh, which I installed on top, and I'm importing speech enum types uh, package, and I'm importing audio just to play the audio in uh, in the Jupyter notebook. Uh, so it's just, it's just an uh, easy function to get your audio up and running and embed within your Jupyter notebook. So these are the things like I have installed. Now, the very first thing is Google Cloud API is an uh, paid service. Uh, there are free quota as well. So what you need to do is you need to go into Google Cloud and you need to register. When If you're a new user, when you register it, you get a $300 free credit, where, which you can use to even play around with a lot of Google Cloud AI solutions. Uh, I'm going to focus a lot on Google Cloud in the next few set of videos. And if you want to register it and get the $300 credit, you can do that to practice this as well as you can play around uh, with a lot of uh, solutions, pre-built, uh, pre-built installed packages like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, or any packages over there. Uh, so you can once you go and log in and get the Cloud Console, you need to go and enable uh, the Cloud Speech to Text API. And once you do that, if you go to this particular URL, URL console.cloudgoogle.com API credentials, uh, you you will get a JSON file to download. You need the JSON file. The JSON file, you need to use it in the local as it will authenticate you to the cloud API. So once you click on this, you have to just tell which uh, project ID you are using and everything, and then you will get a file to download. I have already downloaded the file and kept it in my Google Drive. So if you see, this is that particular uh, JSON file that I have, and I'm going to use this for uh, my uh, uh, for me connecting to the API and doing speech to text. So once I have done that, next what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set the environment variable in my machine. So there is a uh, Google application credential is the environment variable, and I'm just doing a OS do on environment. So it will just uh, do an, uh, it's like an export command. You're just setting the environment variable over that. And that is the path to this particular JSON file, right? Now, once I do that, I can just do an echo of that particular variable and will tell me whether it's set or not just to verify it is set properly you can use that next i'm going to download an uh, wave file uh, that we are going to test with google speech to text let me uh, download this this in this particular url uh, deep speech is an another speech to test package uh, this is open source package um, if you have not seen my deep deep speech video you can click the link on the top and watch it if you don't want to use cloud api and pay you want to use completely open source you can uh, you can build from you can use that uh, package and you can build your own speech to text uh, component and i have mentioned that in the top link and also in the video description you can go and watch it now i downloaded it uh, i can i can use the audio package that i imported to play the audio so once i do speech.wave it's going to play the audio let me play this audio for now 
In the course of a December tour in Yorkshire, I rode for a long distance in one of the public coaches on the day preceding Christmas. Okay. So this is what the audio says. Now let's get, get started with, uh, the, with the code uh, to connect to Google Cloud and pass the audio file and get the transcription back. So it's pretty simple. It's hardly three or four lines of code. So what I'm going to do is first I'm initializing the uh, cli uh, speech client, right? The Google Cloud client that I'm using. I'm just initializing it. I'm calling speech dot speech client and it's giving me a client object. So this just initializes the client object. Then I am taking the wave file I have downloaded on the top. This is the audio file. Uh, I am I am opening the audio file and then I am reading the audio file and assigning it to content. Once I have it, I am telling that this particular audio is what I want to recognize. So I am telling it's a recognition audio and I am passing this content and assigning it to an audio variable. So this is nothing but I am reading the audio and creating kind of an internal byte array of the audio. Next, I am setting the metadata of the audio. That's where the configuration comes into play. So in this recognition config, I am telling what is this audio about. This audio is at 16,000 uh, kilohertz audio. If you have other audios, you can accordingly set what it is. And I'm telling it's an English US audio. If you, uh, Google Cloud API supports a lot of languages. It supports a lot of Indian languages, Arabic language. There are plenty of language support you can go and check. So this is an US, uh, speech audio. If you have any other language, you accordingly set this language code. You can go to the cloud documentation and check it across. And I'm telling it's a linear 16 audio encoding type, right? And then uh, basically I'm also telling that enable word time offset. This means like when the transcription is happening, I want to know what text is spo spoken at what time. What is the start time and end time of that particular text? So that's why I'm enabling this one. If you don't enable it, you will not get the timestamp. So I'm enabling the timestamp. Now, next, what I'm doing, I have my configuration. I have my audio that the simple function I'm going to call is I've created my client object on the top. I'm just telling client dot recognize config and audio. The configuration is here and audio is here. So what it is going to do is it's going to go to Google Cloud. Uh, let me quickly run this. It is going to go to Google Cloud. It's going to take the audio, take the configuration, send it to Google Cloud and get the transcription back. Right now you heard the audio file sometime back. So let's see, like I got the response back. I am, what I'm doing is I'm just iterating the response dot result and the result object, I'm just getting the transcript. That's what I'm doing. So once I print over here, you can see that this is the transcript in the course of a December tour to in Yorkshire. I wrote for a long distance in one of the public uh, coaches on the day preceding Christmas. I, uh, actually, it's road for a long distance. It just came as a road for a long distance. There will be some mistakes, but okay, that's fine, right? So this is the transcription that has happened. Now, what I want to know, like, okay, what time Yorkshire was spoken? What time distance was spoken? In some cases, you, you want to know the sequence of event and what time it was spoken, right? So that's where the uh, enable word offset is going to help. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again iterate to the response.result object. I am uh, getting the uh, result uh, out of it and I'm assigned to alternative. Once I print, you saw on the top, I will get the transcript. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this alternative object. It will contain all the words that were there. December, Yorkshire, long distance, the, all these words are there. So I'm, I am iterating through each of these words. From the words, I am getting the start time and the end time. And what I'm doing is I am printing the word that is the word info dot word is the word itself. And then I'm printing the start time and end time. So if I run this, well, I'm getting like each and every word. Uh, what was the start time it was spoken? What was the end time? So you get the entire uh, transcription. Now you can see basically you did not do anything. You just imported and uh, uh, imported a Python script and you just passed the audio configuration and you got the transcription back. Yeah, back. You are not built any model at all. That's the advantage and power of these APIs. Uh, for a lot of complex problem, you can have simple solution rather building from scratch. And even if you start building something from scratch, like speech to text, it's not going to be easy task because of the amount of data that is required to train and amount of compute that is required to train, which a lot of enterprise do not have. Thank you very much.